Welcome to Fault Pattern Diagnosis of Electrical Circuits. Now, these are diagnostic procedures designed and developed to improve your diagnostic efficiency in electrical circuit troubleshooting. We've been asked for years to come up with a basic electricity, how do you make it work? And we finally boil down with an understanding that what you're looking for is the way to diagnose some of these difficult problems in wiring and to get full utilization out of wiring diagrams. This program is going to accomplish all of that for you and without talking about Ohm's Law. Now, it's nice to know Ohm's Law, but very seldom do we use it to fix a car. What we decided to do is use case studies with wiring harness problems from a collision repair shop because they are the most difficult ones to repair. And we're going to show you how to be profitable with even these tough problems, which will make anything you have even simpler. Our concept is to show you efficient troubleshooting. Take time to study and analyze and use that analyzation to reduce the number of steps you're going to have to do during the diagnosis. What's our objectives of all this? We want you, the technician, to be able to use the improved diagnostic procedures to increase diagnostic efficiency in the service bay. Now, this has a few things you need to know about. If a training program doesn't work in the service bay, that is not effective. You know those. You go to them and they tell you how the system lasts a long time, don't rust. You allow a lot of facts and figures, but nothing to help you diagnose vehicles. You go through classes spending hours on Ohm's Law, and you very seldom use it in the bay. This is going to be purely diagnostics. We spend time in the shop developing our procedures to make sure they're effective and something you can use. These are diagnostic procedures, not just theory. We welcome your suggestions because we always are learning from technicians we work with. We want you to become a maximum productivity technician. We want you to be more efficient, earn more money, so you can buy more stuff from us. Hey, we're in for everybody. But the diagnostic procedures used in this class will be used to diagnose problems with everything from lighting circuits to computer control problems. We're going to spend a lot of time on lighting circuits here because, quite honestly, they can be very confusing. Lighting problems can be difficult because of the complex diagrams that are on four or five pages. That's necessary to show the relationship of all the different circuits. We're going to use failure pattern analysis by carefully observing the function of all the lighting. We're going to help us pinpoint problem areas. We're going to highlight things and look at details. These procedures were developed to quickly find vehicle problems, particularly with vehicles coming from a body repair shop after a vehicle repair. You may have multiple problems on these. These problems you have may not relate to each other. They may be multiple failures, which is very common in a collision. We're going to have to map out these circuits to indicate what circuits are normal and where the problem circuits are. We do this before we ever pick up a meter. We're going to use the diagram. The map we make will point us to the starting point as the likely area with the problem by identifying the common areas that are used by all the problem circuits. That's going to help us focus where we do our testing. We're not going to start testing till we have a direction pointing us to something. Then we're going to use some various things. Now this class is going to show you, the technician, how to get the most out of each diagnostic step. Stop right there and listen. Get the most out of each diagnostic step to reduce the amount of testing necessary to identify the root cause of a problem. Diagnostic testing is well and fine, but you can test yourself to the poorhouse. You can test circuits that shouldn't have to be tested only to prove they're good. We're going to try to how do you focus because a lot of these problems are buried in wiring harnesses on the door channels, under the dash, in the trunk, or rear of the vehicle. Testing sometimes can be very time consuming. We want to reduce the number of those. Now we're going to use electronic control problems as well. And they're going to be diagnosed with the same concept of failure pattern analysis, getting the most out of each diagnostic step before going to the next. Now, we're not going deeply into computer control. We're just going to show you these diagnostic tips we're doing here. We'll work for computer controls. We'll have a separate program for doing things like maximum productivity scan data analysis. Different manufacturers' flow charts are sometimes absolutely required because of the complexity in vehicle designs. And keep in mind, don't think because you're real good on one car, you know something else. 
There are differences that must be addressed to get the level of diagnostics we want to use. As an example, a General Motors coil unplug testing needs to be a slightly different diagnostic approach than the procedures used on Ford and Chrysler. We'll spend time later on talking about the differences between General Motors coil unplug, coil near plug if you want to be accurate, and Chrysler and Ford's coil unplug. We're going to be using diagram from the manufacturer because that's what you have to work with every day. So our diagnostics are utilizing these diagrams and we're going to help you get maximum data from the diagrams. It's the stuff you have to work with every day. Some circuits like lighting have limited diagnostic procedures. We'll show you our unique procedures. There are some unique diagnostic problems that can confuse even the best technicians. The test equipment we use for our vehicle research are PC based for portability. That's because we travel frequently. We will gladly help you with your equipment operation if your equipment is different. Email us your problem and we'll try to help you identify how to operate your equipment. Our diagnostic procedures will work on most equipment on the market, nothing unique. We do use some specialized testing that may work best with moderately priced specialized equipment. We like to draw the line at equipment costing less than $200 if it's specialized. We need good payback and it's not used that often. We will also use voltmeters and scan tools just like you're going to utilize in doing this. Let's talk more about maximum productivity diagnostics. Wrap up this introduction. It's an efficient diagnostic approach that focuses diagnostic tests to the likely root cause of the problem with the least amount of testing possible. Test connections that require time and are sometimes difficult to make, we're going to try to reduce the number of those. We can't eliminate them, but we can try to reduce them by using a good diagnostic approach. Let's talk about skills and how to use them and why you have to have a little more knowledge than most people think about when we diagnose vehicles.